Hey guys, Brian here. Thanks for joining me in the lab. And today I am super excited because it is early springtime. Right now we're at the end of March and early spring, late winter, early spring, that's the time that most people choose to pair their geckos up for breeding. Here at Altitude Exotics, it's no different. We have a whole bunch of breeding pairs, some new pairs, some repeats from last year, all kinds of stuff happening. Everything is paired up and starting to breed now. Things are getting pretty exciting here. We're averaging 30, 40 eggs a week. This is one of my favorite times of year. And today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to make lay boxes for your females. So if you decide to breed, your females will have a lay box to dig and lay their eggs in. Now we use these lay boxes because we don't do a live vivarium. Our geckos live on a newspaper substrate. So if you do have a live vivarium, obviously the whole tank is like an egg box. If you do do a dry substrate, newspaper, paper towels, anything like that, a lay box like this is a perfect place for your girl to lay her eggs. Not only that, but on top of breeding females, these lay boxes double as good humid hides, so they're real good to have in any gecko's cage, whether they're younger, older, male, female, breeding or not breeding, these are a great addition to any cage just as a nice humid hide for your geckos. But right now we're focusing mainly on breeding. So here's how we make our lay boxes. I've got all our materials here for the substrate. I'm gonna show you how we mix that up first, and while that's going, I'm gonna show you how we make the boxes. So first, I have an empty tub, just a 20 quart tub that we have a whole bunch of these laying around. We keep geckos in them, we mix stuff up in them, lots of them. The main thing we use for our substrate is cocoa fiber. I get it in the compressed brick. There's a couple different brands that make it. It's all the same stuff. You can get it either in a bag of loose substrate or a brick of the uh, compressed cocoa fiber. I prefer the bricks, better bang for your buck for the money, and it's real easy to use. So what we do, this was a three pack, I've already used two of them this year for other lay boxes, but you just take one brick of this out, put it in your box, and then for one brick you wanna add about four quarts of water. So I'm going to very carefully here, I've got four quarts of water already measured out, and all you do is pour four quarts of warm water right into the bucket with your cocoa fiber. Now you're gonna let this sit for about an hour and that compressed brick will soak up all the fiber, sorry, the compressed fiber will soak up all the water, it'll expand, it'll get fluffy, and then you can mix it up. After that, we mix it with real fine-grained play sand. Now we do a mixture of about two to three parts cocoa fiber to one part play sand. So it's mainly cocoa fiber with a little bit of sand mixed in. And the sand gives it just a different consistency that I like better. It helps it drain water so it doesn't get real wet and clumpy if you get it too wet. I really think this is important for these lay boxes. It seems to help a lot. And the other important thing is to make sure you get really fine grain sand. They make two kinds of sand at most uh, home improvement stores you can find. The first kind is for mixing cement. It's like construction sand, mainly made for mixing cement and concrete. And that's the kind you don't want. It's got lots of bigger pebbles in it, lots of small rocks. Great for concrete, not good for your geckos. You want the real fine-grained play sand. This is what they make for playgrounds, sandboxes, the kind you would get for your kids to play in. That's the stuff you want. It's very fine grain. If your geckos get it in their mouth and they ingest some of it, it's much easier for them to pass. Obviously, you don't want them to ingest it, but it is kind of inevitable. When they're digging around, they're gonna get a little bit of it in your mouth, so you wanna keep those big chunks out of there. So, I'm gonna let this soak, and we'll come back in a few minutes and mix this all up. back our substrate has been soaking for a while now it's soaked all that water up and as you can see it's gotten real light real fluffy it's not too wet when you squeeze it just a little bit of water comes out and that's perfect that's exactly how we want it it's completely soaked up the water there's no hard dry chunks in there still so what you want to do is mix it around make sure it's all nice and loose and fluffy and then we're going to add our play sand now for one brick, I'll add about three quarts of play sand. So this is a six quart bucket, about half full or so. And usually what I'll do is add it in parts 
So add about half of it first, and then start mixing it around. And you want to get it real evenly distributed. We want it all mixed in real well. And uh, I, do, I find the easiest way is just to use your hands, dig right in, get a little messy, and start mixing it up. Once you have the first half mixed in, go ahead and dump the rest in. That should be about good. And the sand, usually when you buy the sand, it's slightly damp out of the bag, which is perfect because as you saw when I picked up the substrate earlier and squeezed it, a little bit of water trickled out. And that's how you want it. The sand will absorb a little bit more of that water. And this is looking really good. It's real important to get all the way down to the corners of the box and make sure all of this substrate's getting mixed up. Perfect. Now as you can see, the ideal consistency for this, when you grab it and pick it up, it should clump pretty well, almost like a good snowball. If you make a ball out of it and let it go, it should keep its form, but not so thick that it doesn't break up real easily like that. So it should hold its form when you squeeze it, but as soon as you give it a little pressure, it just falls right apart. Another good way to tell is when you squeeze it, see how no water really comes out? You got two drops out of that. That's perfect. You want it saturated to the point that when you squeeze it, no real water comes out. That's exactly how you want it. That's perfect. It's easy enough for the geckos to dig in. If it's too wet, it gets too clumped together and the geckos have a hard time digging into that. That's not what you want. You want it still light and fluffy so the geckos can dig in, but wet enough that it's going to keep your eggs nice and moist, keep them good. It'll keep the geckos humid. They'll use it when they shed. Perfect. This stuff is good for so much. So, that's our substrate mixed up. Now, I'm going to go get the rest of the supplies and I'll show you how we make the actual lay boxes that we fill up with this substrate. Alright, now lastly it's time to make the actual lay boxes. Now you can use all kinds of different materials to make these. I prefer Tupperware style containers. That's just what I found has worked best. They're easy, they're cheap, they're easy to clean. They work real well. My personal favorites are these. They're from a company called Mainstays. They're just called food storage containers. They come in a four pack. They're about four and a half cups each in size. And the reason I like them, you can see they're pretty deep, about six inches deep. And that's what you want. Plenty of depth for your geckos to dig down and really feel safe burying their eggs. And another reason that I like these, when you open them up, you can see they've got a nice square on the top. Now that square is made because there's a matching square on the bottom and they're made to be stackable in your refrigerator or whatever. I like it because that gives me a nice guideline on where to cut to make a hole opening. Because you don't just want to fill this up and set it in your cage. The top is too open, too much air comes out, and your substrate will dry out very quickly. So I like to use the lids, cut a smaller hole in the lid. It helps the gecko feel more secure. It keeps the humidity in. It keeps your substrate moist. It works perfect. So. The easiest way I've found to do this, I've tried lots of different ways, soldering irons, drills, big hole saws, all kinds of stuff. The easiest way, regular old razor blade. Easy enough. Now, obviously a disclaimer for any of our younger gecko breeders out there, anybody who's not real comfortable with a knife, get somebody who is more comfortable or somebody older if you're young to help you with this step because it is kind of dangerous, it can be dangerous. And uh, the main key is just go slow because it's real easy to be cutting in. You've got to put a bit of pressure in to get through the plastic and then you're pulling it and then all of a sudden it yanks out or it cuts a whole line in the thing where you don't want it. So just be careful and get somebody else to help you if you need. But it's fairly simple. I just put a bit of pressure down and then I like to grab the back side of it. So instead of pulling the knife towards me, I just pull the knife down and pull the lid away from me is the way that I found it works best. And obviously I'm doing it on a cutting board here because the knife does have to go all the way through, but real easy to do. Once you get that, it just pops right out. Perfect. That's exactly what you want, just a hole about two inches to two and a half inches square, big enough for your gecko to get in and out comfortably. And that is a perfect lay box. Now the last step is to fill it up with substrate. 
So I've got our substrate here, and I just loosely drop it in, even it out, and then I pack it down with the back of my hand very gently. Now you don't want to pack it down so it's real jammed in there, because again, the geckos need to be able to dig in there easily and comfortably. So I just drop a handful in, pack it down evenly, very little pressure, and then I leave about an inch and a half of space between the top of the substrate and where the lid will be. And that gives them plenty of room to get in there and move around, plenty of room to dig and move all that substrate around. And then a little trick I've learned, because we've got such a large collection, when we feed, we have to go through, and it's very time consuming to dig through every one of these, dig through the entire thing completely, and look for eggs on all of our breeders' different cages. So the trick that I've learned is I use the back of my knuckles like this, and I just gently press on it, and I make these little lines. They're very faint, little knuckle kind of bulges, little bumps from the back of my knuckles. And that way, I know I do that on every single one of these that I make, and every time I dig in one and redo it, I redo those lines. And that way I know when I'm feeding our breeders, I look at the lay box, and if those little bumps are still there, I know the gecko has not been digging in there and there's no eggs that I need to go dig for. If you get to it and it's perfectly smooth and perfectly flat and it almost looks groomed, kind of like that, the geckos perfectly flatten it out and pat it down and it looks completely undisturbed. Obviously in, the, in nature that's good for predators, it doesn't give them any sign that there's eggs buried there. But for me, I know that my grooves from my fingers are gone, that means a gecko's been in there and I should dig and pull the eggs out. Just a little time saver tip, it works well for me. If you've only got a couple breeders, it's not a big deal, but for larger collections, it is a huge time saver. So that is it, you pop the lid back on, that goes right in your gecko cage, and your geckos are going to love it. Like I said, perfect for breeding females. This is the best style setup for lay boxes that I've used. I've tried several different, it's about 10 years now we've been breeding. This is my favorite style, works great, but it's also good for all other geckos. Juveniles, young ones, babies, males, pears, anything you've got. It's a perfect humid hide. Great for their shedding, great for their overall health. I highly recommend putting a few of these together and giving one to all your geckos. Well, guys, that is it. It's that easy. That is how you make a lay box for your geckos. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll try and get back to the comments. Otherwise, uh, if there's more video ideas that you have that you'd like to see us make, more how-tos, more questions, anything else, leave us comments down below. I love your feedback. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, head over to altitudeexotics.com to see all of our available geckos, and have a wonderful day. <laughs>